So this is going to be a brief review of the Sonosite M-Turbo Nobology. And what we mean by Nobology is how to interact with the system, how to operate the system, and how to manipulate your image for optimization. So this is a standard keyboard layout for the Sonosite Turbo. And you can see that there's also the customization you can do for button A and B. And you can choose to actually place labels on the system if you have these defaulted to a specific specification. This group of buttons at the very top that have no label, just a dot on them, are what we refer to as soft keys. And the reason they're called soft keys is because their function changes based on what's going on on the system. And you can see that right above the soft keys on the screen will be the different functions. And this would depend on the mode and the type of probe that you're using at the time. You can also note on the far end there's also page 1 of 2 or 1 of 3, depending on which preset you're in. And so you can press the button to change between these different functions, such as frequency and dynamic range. The first button that we're going to discuss is the important one. Right there in the left upper hand corner that's highlighted, that's the power button. When you press that button the first time, the system starts to boot on. If you hear one beep, the system's turning on. If you hear two beeps, the system is now turning off. Once the system powers on and goes through that boot up screen, once you see the date, time, probe, and all that information appear, you are now ready to actively scan. The triple connect, if you have a system with that, has three buttons which light up and that will tell you which probe is active. The easiest way to know which probe is in which bay is to just trace the cord from the bay to the actual probe or from the probe you're interested in to which bay. You press the button, you'll hear a click and it'll light up and that's a magnetic switch switching from which probe is the active one. To know which probe and preset you're in, if you look at your screen, in the right upper hand corner here highlighted in red, you'll see the preset. In this case, we're an abdominal preset or ABD. And we're using the curved array probe, the C60. The number refers to the size of the probe. So this is a curved array with a face of 60 millimeters. And this becomes important when you're looking at the screenshots for the different linear arrays, the 25 millimeter versus the 38 millimeter and so on. Next is the patient screen button. When you press that button, you come to the patient screen. And when you arrive at this screen, you can now enter patient information. The type of information you're going to enter is dependent on your system and what kind of information you're tracking. And here we're entering some false information on a made-up system for a John Doe patient. And you can see we've entered a last name, first name, an ID number, date of birth, gender. And you also have spaces in the indications to type some free text. And you can enter the user information and who the physicians are related to the study itself. And once you've finished entering all the information you have, or if you operate off a work list, you can see that option on the soft keys. You can exit out of this by pressing done as a soft key, the patient button again, or 2D. And you see that once you exit here to the active scanning, some of that patient information you've entered is now at the top of the screen. If you need to change the exam or preset that you're in, highlight and press the exam key here. And what happens is, depending on the probe you have, it'll bring up all the presets. You can see here we're in the 25 millimeter linear array, and those are the presets we have available. Use the arrow or the trackpad to, so, to highlight the preset you want and press select. The other option is going back to the patient screen and doing the same in the type of study or preset listed there. Either way will get you to the different preset. And you can note in the right upper hand corner that the preset is now highlighted as Venus. Next is our depth key. You can see the two keys here to increase and decrease depth. And you can see that the imaging is a little counterintuitive. So the rule of thumb is that you want to image a few centimeters or a slightly beyond the area of interest. So here we're looking at an internal jugular vein, but the structure of interest we need to highlight is a carotid artery. So we press the down arrow to increase our depth. So we're increasing our depth by going deeper. So you can see here we're seeing a little bit beyond the carotid, so now we have all the structures of interest. If we need to decrease our depth, we're going to press the up key to shallow out or decrease our depth. Next are our gain adjustments. There are two types of adjustments you're going to have here. We're going to have the gain dials on the left-hand corner there, and we're going to have the auto gain button highlighted here. So to just your gain, remember gain is adjusting how bright that image appears on your screen. It does nothing as far as power output or what the system itself is doing and what the probe is transmitting or receiving. It's just adjusting how it's displayed on the screen itself. The top dial is the near field gain or the top half of your screen. The second dial is your far field gain or the bottom half of your screen. And the third is overall gain. 
or over or adjusting the gain for the entire image. And you can see that there's a little notation above each dial saying that you're adjusting either the top half, the bottom half, or the overall gain. And the rule of thumb is anechoic things should remain anechoic and echogenic things should be echogenic enough for you to differentiate them. So it's a little bit of a subjective measurement here. If you need to adjust the gain back to baseline for that preset, press auto gain. Auto gain takes you back to the preset defaults. It does not optimize it like some other systems. This is purely a return to default. So do not be afraid to adjust your gain as needed to improve your image. Because if you find that you've actually made your image worse and you're not sure how to get it back, auto gain will take you back to those preset defaults. Next are your molds of ultrasound. And those are down there in the bottom right hand corner. 2D imaging is your standard B mode or grayscale imaging. This is your button to take you back to regular two dimensional imaging each time to turn off any other presets or get you out of any sub menu screens that you may be in. M mode is motion mode. When you press it the first time, you're gonna activate your motion mode spike and you can see that highlighted here in green. If you need to adjust that, use your trackpad. Remember, on the Sonosite system, whatever is green is what's moving, what's highlighted and moving. So press M mode once to activate the spike. You adjust it to where you want it, you press it again, and your M-Mode tracing is now activated. If you were to press that M-Mode button again, you will return back to your spike and out of the tracing. To exit fully out of M-Mode, just press the 2D button. Doppler refers to spectral Doppler. So when you press the Doppler key, the first time your Doppler spike is activated, and you can see here we have it within the carotid artery. And once again, you press it again and the tracing is activated and you can see your arterial waveform. If you were to press the Doppler button again, you would return to the image, uh, the 2D image with your spike in place. To get out of it fully, once again, press 2D. Color will activate color Doppler. It will activate your color uh, Doppler box. You can see here we have this place within the carotid artery. If you were to press it again, it would turn the box off. If you need to switch between color Doppler and color power Doppler, that's the soft key function here, and you can see that first soft key will let you toggle between power Doppler and uh, color Doppler. So you can see here we're in color Doppler, we toggle that switch, we're now in power Doppler. Next is adjusting to the clip menu. Now, in the way we've set up our system at my institution, we've defaulted button A to be the clip menu. You can set button A to be whatever you want and that'll depend on how you've set up your system. If you don't have it defaulted to your clip menu, when you're on the screen scanning, if you go to page two of your soft keys, you click on the soft key to go to page two and you have clips as an option. When you press that, you get to the clip menu. And the clip menu has a couple different options here. One is how you clip. You have the option between time and EKG beats if you have your EKG leads hooked up. If you're on beats, you have the number of beats you can set. If you're on time, you have the number of seconds you can set up to a minute. You have the option to have preview on or off and to have the clip set to a prospective clipping, meaning when you press the clip button, you're going to clip from that point onward or retrospective, meaning you're clipping the few seconds or few beats before that you press the button. When you press the clip button, you're going to capture a clip and this will be determined by the clip menu that you've set up based on the length and time. Now, when you press the clip button, you're going to know that you're clipping because the percentage of hard drive there becomes highlighted in gray. So as it's clipping, that gray bar will appear over the percentage to let you know you're capturing the clip. Once you've captured a clip, if you have preview on, it will then play that clip back to you. Now, the thing to remember with this is if you are playing that preview on you're going to see that clip that clip will not be saved unless you press the soft key for save or delete and you will be stuck in watching that clip over and over again until you choose to either save delete or return to 2d imaging the save key will save you a still of the image on the screen at that time however that can sometimes be somewhat blurry as patients breathe and your hand may move i suggest freezing the image and then you can save it. That way you can make sure you have the actual image to save that you think you're saving. Such as this. When you have an image like this, you've frozen it and you can save it. You have nice crisp outlines. You don't have any motion blur. Now, when you use the freeze button, you capture a cine loop and you can scroll back through that. So you can see here that we've scanned through. We've now frozen and you can tell that because all the soft keys have disappeared. 
and you're scrolling back through the image that you've captured because you've not captured just the one image on the freeze you've captured a range of images and now you can see the frames here as you scroll forward and back through that cine loop now the way to scroll back and forth through the cine loop is either to use the overall gain dial and you can dial forward or backwards you can use the trackpad to swipe forward or backwards in that cine loop timeline or you can use the left or right arrow all three will function the same. It depends on which one is more comfortable for you to go frame by frame with the arrows, to move a large area at a time in a smooth fashion with the trackpad, or to use a dial for a different tactile interaction. Next is the caliper key. This is so you can measure different things that you've captured. Remember to freeze the image and you can use the select key to adjust how you're moving the caliper. So when you gone through scanning and you've frozen your image you find a nice structure such as here's the IVC you've frozen it and once again you know it's frozen because the soft keys have disappeared you press caliper the calipers pop up remember whatever is green is what's moving to switch between the two caliper crosshairs you select if you press caliper again you get a new set of calipers here and you can see that the B caliper is being adjusted and you can see the measurements at the bottom and once again the green is on B because that's what's being adjusted if you need to switch between which is the active set of calipers, use the soft key for switch to switch between A and B. And if you need to delete a set of calipers, that's where that delete key comes in. So if you accidentally press caliper instead of select, which happens quite often, you can then select that second caliper and delete it to remove it. Once again, here's a shot of the M Turbo keyboard. And remember, there are a lot more buttons and interactions and things we can do on the system than what we've gone over here. These are just some of the basic functions that we've gone over and really just as a primer to get you started looking at system operation with the eye towards procedure and ultrasound guided procedures.